Hello world, I'm MJ and this is Film Philosophy. This week we're gonna talk about the 1976 film Logan's Run. Logan's Run is a science fiction film that has won and been nominated for a number of awards. Some are an Academy Award, but majority of their winnings are Saturn Awards. Granted, a lot of the awards that they won is for its visuals and special effects. However, this film touches on government, identity, and beliefs. Also find out how this 1976 sci-fi film has a common trait to a 2008 Pixar movie, WALL-E. So, let us begin. Logan's Run is based on the book that was written by William F. Nolan and George Clayton Johnson. Now, William F. Nolan is well known for creating other sci-fi books such as The Black Mass and Sam Space series. He has won a lot of awards due to his numerous works. Some of the awards that he won are two Edgar Allan Poe Awards and two Bram Stoker Awards. The list is long and I will leave a link down in the description below for you to check out after this video. Johnson on the other hand has a lot of extensive work when it comes to television. Some of the well-known works that he did were Logan's Run the television series, The Twilight Zone, and Star Trek the original series. He also contributed a lot of other works and one of the most notable are Ocean's Eleven. And I'm talking about the 1960s Rat Pack version, not the 2004 one. For his work in Logan's Run, he was nominated for two awards, a Hugo and a Nebula Award. He is a well-known screenwriter and comic book writer as well. He won the Inkpot Lifetime Achievement Award. He has also been nominated for four Balrog Awards due to his work in The Twilight Zone. The screenplay was written by David Z. Lag Goodman. Now, Goodman is a playwright and screenwriter for both television and film. It's interesting to note that he also co-wrote with Sam Peckinpah the controversial film Straw Dogs. Goodman was nominated for an Academy Award for Lovers and Other Strangers and the remake of Farewell My Lovely. The film was directed by Michael Anderson, a British director that is also known for other works such as Doc Savage, The Man of Bronze, Orca, Around the World in 80 Days, and The Dam Busters. Now let's talk about the cast. Our titled hero was played by Michael York. Michael York is a British actor that started his career on stage before hitting the silver screen. Some of his notable works are Murder on the Orient Express, Seven Nights in Japan, and my favorite, The Musketeers Trilogy. Michael York has an uncredited role on Spaceballs. He was one of the apes that was riding down the beach, parodying the movie that we discussed last week. York is active on television, but he is mainly active as a voice actor. Some of his notable voice acting gigs are Batman the Animated Series, Superman the Animated Series, Justice League Unlimited, The Simpsons, Ben 10 Alien Force, and Star Wars The Clone Wars. Jenny Agutter is also a British actress who started her career in television. Some of her notable movies are The Eagle Has Landed, An American Werewolf in London, The Man in the Iron Mask, Amy, Child's Play 2, she is currently on the BBC series called The Midwives. Agatha has been involved in numerous charities all over the world. She has also won a lot of awards including BAFTA for Best Actress in a Supporting Role, Emmy for Outstanding Actress in a Drama. Richard Jordan is an American stage, screen, and television actor. Some of his notable movies are Old Boyfriends, Les Miserables, June, and The Bunker. The man who portrayed as the old man in the movie, Peter Ostinov, is a heavyweight in the industry. Seriously, look at his Wikipedia entry. It's like the list is so long and I am tired. Some of his notable films are Kuvadis, Hot Millions, and Spartacus. He has won and been nominated for a number of awards. I'm going to leave a link in the description down below and you can check it out later. Seriously, this unassuming man on the film, who would have thunk, right? I would also like to mention the man who portrayed as Box, the robot. Roscoe Lee Brown. Now Brown is an American actor and director who is mainly known for his rich voice. An article states that he is more heard than seen. Notable films to which he lent his voice to are Babe as the narrator, Oliver and Company, Treasure Planet. And here's a bonus, he also did an abridged version of the Star Wars story. Once again the music has been composed and arranged by Jerry Goldsmith. I told you we're gonna bump into him again. 
Now let's talk about the characters and let's start with our hero, Logan Five. Logan is an interesting character study because he is a Sandman and a Sandman has to have absolutes in terms of his beliefs, especially on the system. Regardless of the fact of him being a Sandman, Logan has always had an inquisitive mind. He already has questions about the system even before the retrogram of his life clock. To whatever doubts or questions that he may have, he can only share them to his closest friend. Francis. It makes me think that Logan only believes on the system because of his ties of being a Sandman. Logan always had questions but he never truly pursued them. It was only after the Sanctuary mission in which he was able to pursue these questions and look for answers. Now let's talk about Jessica, the non-believer. Jessica is the type of person who doesn't believe on the system. She actually questions it entirely. Although she is a non-believer and she has these strong feelings against the system, she is careful of what she says because of Logan's company. She doesn't uprightly say all of the things that she believes and always falls onto reasonable doubt. Jessica has ideas that is coming from either herself or from the people that she hangs out with. Regardless, it makes her a very interesting person who thinks outside of the system outside of the dome. Now let's talk about Francis, the conformist. Now Francis is the type of person that totally believes and relies on the system, which makes him the ideal Sandman. If you're gonna give the job to one person that can make the absolute decision, it is to a man that actually believes on the system. The saying in the movie that a Sandman never runs actually makes sense in this case. It makes me believe that they are profiled to a particular trait like Francis. Francis often convinces Logan that it is a perfect system. Francis is a good person when you really think about it. It's not because of his beliefs of this perfect system that makes him wrong, it's just the circumstances. Those kinds of extremist views has a negative and positive impact in their life. Negative because it is absolute and there's no leeway for question and positive because it gives meaning and clarity to Francis. So what is the philosophy behind this? Well, let's start with our characters, which is Logan, Jessica, and Francis. Logan is actually quite similar to Zira and Cornelius from the previous video, in which there is two conflicting sides in their lives. We have Jessica, who is the non-confirmist, and then we have Francis, who is the extremist. Now Jessica represents this aspect in Logan's life where he has questions but never truly pursued them. And on the other hand, we have Francis, who is the embodiment of his identity and beauty. You can see the conflict within Logan when he is already confronted with these two embodiments at the end of the movie. Logan and his journey to find sanctuary actually led him that maybe everything that they believe is wrong and that the system is a lie. All throughout the movie we heard one word, renewal. In their system it is their form of reincarnation. When your entire system falls down on you and everything that you've been led to believe was a lie, it could be very hard to accept. In the end where Logan and Francis finally meet, he asked Francis to look at the palm of his hand and Francis saw it, it was clear and couldn't accept it. In the end when Francis died, he still believed on that system, saying, Logan, you've been renewed. In the movie, when Logan asked the old man if they can stay there, the old man said, yes, it belongs to the people. And that is one information that I looked into. It actually refers to Abraham Lincoln's first inaugural address in which he says, This country with its institution belongs to the people who inhabit it. Whenever they shall grow weary of the existing government, they can exercise their constitutional right of amending it or the revolutionary right to mismember or overthrow it. So what does this mean? Well, when Logan went out of the dome, there is no pollution. There is no overpopulation. The world has healed. This is the film's subtle way of saying that there's going to be a change, a change within their government and their system. But with those changes, there's going to be challenges. And for me, that would be the most interesting aspects of this film. Remember earlier in the video when I said that this movie has common traits with Wally? -E? This is where it comes in. These two movies, Logan's Run and Wally, -E, is a case study in terms of people losing their humanity. Both movies are set in a place where there is a controlled environment and there is a price to pay. And for me, that price is their humanity. It is the struggles that makes us who we are and it's not the pleasures that comes along with it. For me as an individual, challenges is what defines me as a person. And always living in comfort makes you numb for the actual good things that may happen in your life. 
both the Axiom passengers and the Dawn dwellers will have to learn how to be human again. This concludes this week's video. I hope you guys like it. And if you feel like that I've forgotten anything, comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And next week, we will talk about the 1972 film, The Poseidon Adventure. Watch it, and I'll see you next week. Peace.